here goes nothing. Okay, something in train. This is the third take <laughs> um, of my Thunder Tiger EK4 introduction. So I have XTM X Factor and an XTM Mammoth that I need to work on, so I'll make this short and sweet. Or Swedish or whatever you want to say, but got this on eBay for 200 bucks. Um, so it was 150 starting bid plus 35 shipping, but I was able to negotiate with the seller an offer of 200 plus 35 shipping, and it's finally mine. Uh, classic, so it's the early version with the short head. So these are notorious for overheating. Um, because they have really small heat sinks, so this is supposed to be on a helicopter. So you can see it has a really small heat sink, just like the one on my Raptor or my um, Quick Quick 30. Because they, um, helicopter engines, they have a cooling fan on the flywheel, and they have a shroud that directs that cold air onto the cooling head, so they don't need such a big cooling head, and it also saves weight. So they just don't have a big cooling head, but when you put it on a car, it's just not meant for that, and it's not designed for that, so that's why they needed to. Um, in the next late versions, they made a really big classic style heatsink. I personally like this kind of heatsink, it just looks nice and also has easy access to um, the head screws. So I can use an Allen key like this, like this way, because usually what I would do is, because it's so deep in there, I would have to do this and then get pliers to. Um, turn the Allen key because I don't have a set of Allen drivers, but oh well, whatever. I might just like this kind of classic style. So, um, from my understanding, this came out in 2002, I think. I forgot. Haven't done that much research, but it's a 0.7 cubic inch um, helicopter engine. Um, and that's 11.4 cc if you convert it. And something like HPI Savage 25 is a point twenty five, so point twenty five VS point seventy is pretty <laughs> pretty crazy. So you can see it's missing a body post, but yeah whatever, I'll just 3D point run. Um let's see the body is in pretty rough shape. Um it has a cutout like I said so it is overheating so it looks like the previous owner knew about that and just cut out cut open the um so the air goes through. I'm just gonna probably put a mesh so rocks don't get stuck inside. But yeah, um, you can see pretty rough condition. Uh, I did glue the cracks, but the back is just hideous. Um, you can see it's just cracks and cracks and cracks. Yeah, whatever. All that matters is that it's just for protection. So I'm just gonna run it on this new Bone Sprue 2012 mix um, that I recently bought 3 gallons of for $95 no tax, no ship, um, no shipping fee so that's almost 8 bucks a gallon if you do the math so that's really good price for the fuel because like Traxxas is like what, like 16 bucks a gallon it's kind of crazy but that's in there right now but I just like attempted to start it but I just won't start I'll talk about that later <clears throat> so things that I did was just add the, on this, um, what should I call it, this uh, air filter from my Savage, it's a Traxxas one, I really like these, I use them in all my trucks. Um, also put in the radio system, and I just cut with a hacksaw this low, um, high speed needle, I'll talk about that later. And put in some fuel obviously, and just take off the head and inspect it. That's all I did to this truck. Everything is from when I bought it, um, when it did, got delivered today from eBay. So, drum roll please. This is how the bottom looks. Oh, there's a roll of tape. Shoot. Okay, whatever. So, you can see, this is ridiculously good condition for an EK4. It's almost new. It's probably, these few scratches are probably from... This on a just storage and just like accidentally scratching it or something. But this is basically new, guys. So you can see all of this, all the plastic parts, no scratches whatsoever. And the tires. Um, these might be pneumatic tires. 
they they look like they don't have foam in them, so I mean, yay, I guess whatever. But um, these have um, almost no wear whatsoever. It's just dust um, from probably just like one run, and no cracks. These just like really good condition. You can see that you can squish them. There's no cracks, and the shocks on this are just oh so good. Um, the dampening guys, look at that. It's this so good. Original shocks all around. Correct me if I'm wrong, because. <laughs> I just haven't done that much research on this, but these look to be original shocks, and these are really good. So, you have the double style, like most monster trucks, like Savage and um, T-Max, and you have one one shock, and then an inboard one right here, like a sideways one, hidden behind the bumper, so you can see. This front one has doesn't bottom out, but the back does. And this thing's a wheelie, so, because of the super torque from the helicopter engine. So, what I have here is a um, radio link um, RC6GS with a receiver with telemetry running off of both, both of these are running off um, 2S 1500 milliamp batteries. So, let me turn it on for you. So, I have it set to my EK4 model. I don't know if you can see it, but what, yeah, whatever. Um, yeah. So I have my EK4 S2. Then just turn this on. And the servos are, I didn't change anything. These are really good. Steering is really good, guys. No binding whatsoever. And braking is also really good. But yeah, whatever, you can see that. So did take off the engine head screws and took off the heat sink and just inspected it and it's pretty black in there. It's not actually brown, but it's just black oil. Like this, like you can't see through it, it's just oil. So that was really weird, but yeah, whatever. Same thing happened to my friend's MGT where his pulsar actually had this really black oil um, coming out of it. It was a drill start and it was just spraying oil all over the place, so it was really weird. Um, but yeah, whatever. So, yeah, this one is pretty loose on compression, but they actually sell piston and sleeve sets for this thing for like 40 bucks on eBay. That's including shipping. So that is insane because you can't even find a spur here for this. That's, that's how rare these are. But you can find a piston and sleeve for this. So yeah, I mean, that's I might just get that because it's only 40 bucks. So it's pretty crazy. So, what else? So yeah, clutch is a little bit blued out, but it's free and it's not seized, so that's good to see. Yeah. So, the exhaust is really clean. Um, there's like a few stains around it, but I mean, that's to be expected. Like, my, um, my Webro 35 engine muffler on my Quick 30 um, RC Heli, is just was just coated with these stains and I had to use a wire brush plus WD-40 just to scrape it off like it took me an hour but yeah this is really clean um you can see right here too um, and, and the engine block is um the crank wait which one I forgot what you call those but um the block right here um is really really clean too and also the carburetor, you can see it's basically new, except for the high-speed new valve, which, just like I said, I had to hacksaw it because this thing uses hex for the needles in the carburetor. So, um, it has one screw right here, and it has the idle screw right here, and another screw right here, and then it has the high-speed. So the High speed probably just froze and then they try to screw it out, but they didn't use a proper size. Like they probably used an imperial allen key and just stripped it. And I had to hacksaw it, and then now I can use it with my flat head right here. But the rest are fine. It's one, the idle, and the two screws on the side. Which brings me to my next question: Is which of these is the low speed? 
So it opens this way, so the needle is on this side, so it's going this way and that. And then the receiver end is right here, and it's just where the fuel comes out too. So, um, but the needle right here is just a needle, it's not connected to anything, so. I don't know if it's supposed to be that way, because I've never disassembled a carburetor on the other car, just because I haven't had the time to do that, but, um, I don't know, I'm pretty sure this side is, but I don't know, again. Um, uh, but yeah, whatever. And it doesn't start, so it seems like it doesn't prime. It, it just, I, I don't know, I'm not a noob or anything. I've worked on probably almost 20 nature trucks in this last, these last th two, three months. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not new, but for some reason I just can't start this. I haven't, I haven't tried that hard, but because I just need to work on the other trucks which are here. So you can see this. Um, yeah, I'm gonna four wheel steering setup on this. It has only front wheel, but it's gonna be pretty interesting, guys. <laughs> so this is a project for another day. Well, I mean, I have to work on this first because this isn't mine. I'm getting it done for someone. But <clears throat> yeah, if you guys know, let me know in the comments if you know where to find the pull star for this because this thing is just really weird. You can see as I turn this. Um, observe the flywheel right here. I'm going to turn it with my drill. That's how slow it is, so it's, that's going to be really hard to start with that kind of speed on the flywheel. So let me know if there's a pull start for this, but yeah. Um, really nice truck. And of course we have the XTN Mammoth. With, um, this thing getting its trans new built rebuilt and I'm actually 3D printing the gears for this thing because the guy wants me before he breaks his last set of spur gears he wants me to 3D print them so um, because these are just impossible to find on anywhere on eBay or anything you just, they just don't make them anymore so this one actually really interesting it has an XTM457 which is same as my T-Max and I've been searching for these a long time like you find one occasionally on eBay, but it's pretty rare. But this thing is in pristine condition as well. It's no scratches on the head. <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry about that, guys. But, yeah, this thing is in really good condition. Um, it has... The guy bought it 500 new when back in the day, and like 20 years ago. And it has almost... $600 in aluminum parts. That's a fortune. So I'm really excited to be working on this thing. Yeah, this is a beast. Um, I ran this, but it's a little bit too fast for my street. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, I'll do a video on this soon. But yeah, like I said, transmission, um, gear is getting 3D printed. Uh, back to the EK4. So... Yeah, so just pretty sure it's this screw, but just let me know if I'm wrong. And if you actually do know the stock needle settings for this thing, please let me know, guys. <laughs> um, I can't stress that enough, but please. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, so the, the two questions I had were, um, why is it not starting, and why is it, um, which one is the low speed needle? And if you do know, can you let me, um, if one of you guys knows, um, if one of you guys know, um, where to find a body post for this, I'd be glad to buy one, so, because you can see it's cracked right here. But yeah, that's basically it, I mean, it just doesn't start for some reason, I just check for spark and it, it does glow up really good. Um, yeah, I'm not going to show you it on camera, but it is really good. So, I mean, that's basically it for this video. Got a chemistry test and I need to study, so. But I'll be back tomorrow, I guess, maybe. I don't know, sometime this week to make another video. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.